Uh, good afternoon and good morning. Depending on where you are in this country, then uh, depends what time it is. But greetings and salutations, everybody. Welcome to the PCA Live. We're going to be covering some government affairs here over the next few minutes. I'm Scott Pierce, Executive Director of the Premium Cigar Association. Joshua Haberski is with me here, at PCA Headquarters, Head of our Government Affairs. And Glenn Loop, our Director of State Advocacy Affairs, is also joining us today as we dive into the many issues that are uh, confronting us here uh, and the most pressing ones. Um, before we get going, I just want to take a, a particular minute just to say um, hello to everybody. Uh, trade show is just about 40 some odd days away. So looking forward to seeing everybody there. I've got a lot of excitement. Um, a lot of uh, exhibitors I know are excited. A lot of exhibitors are doing some special products this year and uh, a lot of retailers. Thank you guys very much. There's been an insane amount of registrations that have come in over the past couple of weeks. So I feel like it's going to be a phenomenal time. It's going to be great to see everybody again. And I think we're going to have a really good time this year. And I think we've got some new stuff too that uh, we're excited to do. So on that note, um, one of the important aspects of the trade show is being able to come together to talk about what we're talking about today, but in a much broader global scale about how do we as an industry come together more often and in more effective ways to combat the mountainous uh, tide of, I don't even know if that's a correct thing to say mountainous tide, kind of mixing metaphors there, but this uh, humongous aspect of regulations and taxes that continue to assault this industry. And so that's one of the major things that we're going to be focusing on discussing at the trade show from a global industry perspective. Uh, but today I know there's a few unique instances that we wanted to talk about both at the federal level and at the state level as well. So on that note, I will turn it over to Joshua to begin discussing some of the federal issues that we're confronting. And then afterwards, Glenn will talk about a couple of state specific issues that we have going on. Yeah, absolutely. I think that this month has been extremely pressing at the federal level. You know, the first few months of the year, as we mentioned in the past, was been dominated by the states and we still have a lot of state activity, as, as Glenn is well aware. Uh, but federally, with the tax bills that were introduced, some of the negotiations surrounding the infrastructure bill, uh, there are there there is a, a movement to insert tax increase language uh, into some of these larger packages. So we've been fending uh, that off as, as much as we can. Uh, we've sent uh, over 7,500 grassroots letters um, to uh, members of Congress, our members. We encourage people to continue to do so on cigaraction.org. Um, but also, you know, are sending out our talking points and having a series of meetings. We've conducted over 50 meetings on, on, on this topic alone and uh, circulated talking points to all Hill offices this week on those uh, tax proposals. Again, that's the ta Tobacco Tax Equity Act of uh, 2021. Uh, there is a standalone version in both the House and Senate, uh, but our biggest concern and fear is that language being inserted into a larger uh, package. Um, in addition to that, you know, we mentioned on our last broadcast uh, that uh, the discussion about the flavor policy and this big press conference, essentially, that the FDA and the Center for Tobacco Products had. We're still waiting for the actual language uh, in, in that uh, draft rule. Um, we will activate uh, at the appropriate time, but we are having some initial conversations with both the administration uh, as, as well as members of Congress about that flavor policy, what is going to be included, what is not going to be included, um, things along those lines. Uh, yesterday, the Center for Tobacco Products released uh, draft guidance on user fees for tobacco products. Um, if you are a manufacturer, that is something that you might be interested in uh, to follow more closely. And then finally, we continue as an association to have dialogue with the National Academies of Sciences. Uh, we've all presented uh, to, to that forum and that committee and providing research to them in, in the follow up. Uh, they are conducting their third public session uh, tomorrow on uh, premium cigars and their health effects and usage. Uh, so I know that some of our industry partners and us, we will be monitoring that and providing updates further uh, there. But, you know, my, my parting shot on the federal update is that if you have not taken action on cigaraction.org cigar 
for the Tobacco Tax Equity Act. We really need it. Uh, the timing for this is critical. We have to, uh, you know, bump those numbers up so that we get uh, some more participation there. Yeah. So just on that note, uh, Ed, I see Ed Ryan on here. Wes, if you guys are out there visiting your stores as you're out there doing the rounds um, and going to these retailers, uh, please, where you can remember cigaraction.org, bring that up whenever you're talking to retailers and, and or consumers. Um, just that this is a really great direct way doesn't take up a whole lot of time for everybody to participate in protecting ourselves against all these undue burdens of taxes and other crap that people don't want to throw at us yeah and before we uh shift over to glenn in the states i do want to go back to something that scott mentioned in the the beginning of the the show you know the trade show what can you expect from a government affairs perspective we had a really great meeting with our, our leadership last week on all government affairs team our consultants are um, research team, Glenn, um, and we're excited for what is to come. Um, you know, at, at the trade show, we will be hosting our government affairs update and panel. Um, in addition to that, um, you know, we'll have industry players, some of the key principles that were vital in the success of 2020 in both the legislative and regulatory front. Uh, we are also doing two new breakout sessions, one on state advocacy and grassroots, which Glenn and I will be training folks on the tools. I highly recommend that for uh, if you're involved with your state association and leadership, you're you know, the president down to the treasurer, to the secretary. If you have a leadership role in your state association, please attend that breakout session. That will be on Monday. And then we're also doing an international policy segment um, you know, there are groups like Cigar Rights of the World uh, that are looking at policy from a global perspective, and we want to make sure that we can share best practices across the pond uh, here in the United States and uh, kind of get some best practices and lessons learned from those folks. Both ponds since it's the world, yeah, right? Yeah, both, both, both ponds. Cigar Rights of the World, that's right. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but, um, you know, the, we, we have a lot planned and scheduled for that. Uh, Glenn is working on an update to our state association guide, which will be available at the trade show for, for folks. Um, this is more of a comprehensive advocacy guide than anything. And then um, we are also preparing retailer activation kits. One of the things that we want to ensure going into this year is that retailers are getting consumers and customers involved. Uh, so, you know, point of sale, yeah. Re registration uh, or, or signups for cigaraction.org, materials on how you get involved in advocacy. Those are things that will be readily available. Yeah, Wes, great recommendation right there. Setting up an iPad right there at the register for folks to sign up takes less than 20 seconds for someone just to put their name and email address in. Um, and then that way it's, it's helpful for being able to reach out. Anything that's happening locally, um, it helps us be able to amass an army to be able to respond quickly. We've talked about this before, and I think sometimes I don't want people to feel jaded in this political process that we're never going to be able to achieve victory. But I can tell you that, that that's just not the case. And one shiny example that uh, just comes to mind immediately is New Jersey, where they wanted this bill that was going to require anybody selling tobacco products, regardless of what that product was, had to also sell cessation products. So you had to have Nicorette gum when you're walking in to go buy, you know, your box of Padrones, which we all know is just idiotic on its face. Well, we were able to mobilize and react so quickly that the author of the bill, uh, the gentleman that was working for him, responded back, said that they had never gotten such a deluge of messages from their constituents on a bill as quickly as this. And then they acted and we were able to carve it out for premium cigars that this is not in wherever you're selling premium cigars or smoking lounges. This wasn't required because this is not what it was targeting and they took it out and we reacted quickly. So we know we can be successful when we can mobilize. This is our best tool for us to mobilize and mobilize quickly in order for us to do this on a much larger scale across the country in all localities. Yeah. And as we see the reopening, I know this is something we mentioned on past broadcasts. Uh, we fought hard in a lot of different states and localities uh, regarding COVID restrictions and the reopening phases. Um, I think at this point, um, most, uh, you know, most of the country, if not all of the country, has reopened to some degree of, of indoor smoking. 
Um, if there are examples that you are all aware of where this isn't taking place, again, we sent out that call uh, to arms to folks. If there is a locality or state that is restricting indoor smoking because of mask policies or COVID, please contact Len or I because we will fight that. But I think at this point, um, we are, are, are uh, reopened to some extent based off of the guidelines of other retail businesses and restaurants. We haven't been, we're not ad adversely affected by that. Um, Glenn, I know that you've been working diligently in several states, New York and Delaware, top of mind. Uh, what's going on in the states? I'll tell you what. New York is now a living, breathing case study of, of how it should be done. Um, I tell you, and I'm, I'm proud of all these state associations across the country, and, and we all as an industry should be proud of all each and every one of them. And, and by my calculation, I think a little over 50% of the country is organized in some form or fashion at the state association level, and that's a discussion for another day. But uh, And we've got great examples of where states like Maryland have warded off serious tax increases and, and the like. But the, the topic of the day really is, because it's the most recent case study, is New York. And this morning, this is like CNN breaking news for the cigar industry. This morning, uh, PCA, in concert with the New York Tobacconist Association, launched a single petition for two pieces of legislation. And guess what? We don't have to fight something. We get to advocate for something, and that's exciting for this industry. So uh, I, I, as much as the work has been done by the New York Tobacconists Association uh, on, on this measure, we have to give credit where credit is due, and that's a willing legislator. Uh, so let's say that again, a willing legislator. And in this, in this case, a, a member of the leadership of the New York Senate, chair of the Senate Labor Committee, State Senator Jessica Ramos has introduced Senate Bill 6741 for a 50 cent tax cap in the state of New York to help mitigate the harm, the damage, the continuing threat that the 75 percent OTP tax presents to the retailers of the state of New York. Uh, 75 percent. That's happened once before uh, in the state of New York uh, in my last decade of uh, following the, the advocacy efforts in this industry. And I remember what happened the first time a 75% OTP tax uh, was enacted. It sent all the box sales to surrounding states, cheaper, less expensive alternatives for folks to purchase their cigars. And as the retailers of New York put it at that time, and will tell you now, you become essentially a tasting room where someone walks in and they buy a cigar try it and then buy it somewhere else as unfortunate as that is because we need to be diligent about supporting our lo local brick and mortars i know numerous times sure you can get something cheaper somewhere but you got to support the local small businesses that are the backbone of this industry and that 50 cent tax kill senate bill 6741 will help bring that business back to the state of new york and also senator ramos has introduced senate bill 6742 that would allow existing cigar shops to have a license for on-site consumption of alcoholic beverages to help enhance the revenue stream of the local brick and mortar shops that were, were or are in business as of June 1st of 2018. So if you were in business as of that moment, June 1st of 18, you could apply for this special alcohol beverage license for on-site consumption in your local cigar lounge. And this was also, and I really, admire how the New York Tobacco Association has presented this. It's a way to enhance the partnership and the revenue for local wineries and distilleries that want to do business with the local cigar shop. And that's their political angle. Think about that. What a case study that is as the local uh, brewing, distilling, winery business has pr proliferated across this country. Absolutely. The opportunity for cigar shops to reinforce their revenue stream and have those types of partnerships with those local um, alcohol producers that have blossomed again in, in communities throughout the country is going to serve as a unique partnership. And also, and I, I just, again, can't, I, I participate in these weekly meetings with their board and I, we did a statewide association meeting with the New York Tobacco Association last week and they had over 20 shops participate in that, in that call. 
where this legislation was discussed. And, and to have that type of leadership is also an example for others. Uh, and it, let me just share this because I get excited about this. The, when when uh, sh- cigar shops that are not on the board were on this statewide call and they started saying, I've got a relationship with this legislator. I've got a relationship with that legislator. I'll call this one. I'll call that one. And it was a sense of excitement, but also a sense that everybody's got a network. Mm-hmm. Everybody's got political associations, political affiliations, uh, friendships, allies that are, that may be in that New York State Assembly or Senate. And they were willing to work those networks to advance this legislation. But there was also this, there is also this sense of political resolve that they're okay. I'm not going to say okay, but if the legislation doesn't pass this time, they know that the foundation has been built for the reintroduction of this in the 22 general, uh, 22 legislative session. So they know they're building a foundation and they're not going to be discouraged if something bad happens. That's a great case study in and of itself. Well, look, this can happen in New York. It can happen anywhere. Exactly. I mean, it's, it's, you know, Frank Sinatra. Uh, (laughs) If you can make it in this town. Things that we need to be (laughs) cognizant of is that, you know, if we had that level of participation in, you know, let's say a half dozen of the key states, that that political apparatus would be hard to contend with. We need a lot of the other states and we're, we're building that infrastructure, but we have a lot of headway to go. I think that New York is is a great model of, of success. You know, next week, uh, next Tuesday uh, from one to two on June 1st, we're doing a, a webinar about managing a, a state association and using the Maryland folks as a case study. Um, they, they worked on a ton of different legislation this session and were very successful at it. So, you know, we have a lot of case studies of fighting bad legislation and, and Glenn, and I think this pro- broadcast is one of the few times where, you know, we get to highlight what New York is doing from a positive light. But also, I know that you uh, were, were involved in Delaware, which is another positive bill. Well, we cannot say enough again about another sitting legislator. And again, it's great. It's our industry's job to defend itself and to, and to take care of itself. But when you have these legislators coming to the plate to help us out, that's the amazing uh, case study and the evolution of the political sophistication of this industry. So in this respect, we got to praise Senator Laura Sturgeon of the Delaware State Senate. Uh, she has Senate Bill 131 last week. Uh, she went to, to the map with the Senate Executive Committee and got a bill reported on a vote of five to one to reduce the OTP tax in Delaware from 30% to 15%. And it was bipartisan. Senator Sturgeon's a Democrat. There were Republicans on the, on the committee. There were Republicans listening in on the committee hearing that were supporting her effort. And it was like this, again, a cross section of some uh, taxation of alcohol interests with the taxation of cigar interests coming together to say relief is in order to help our small businesses get into that post-pandemic economy. And, um, and Josh, you and I have talked about this, but, and I'm not going to mix the, our states up, but w- the, the, what we need to do is dovetails with each other. We need to take the video of Senator Sturgeon in that committee hearing and blend it with the uh, committee hearing in Michigan on their tax cap to show legislators coming to bat for this industry. These were two great case studies of hearings where not the retailer, not a consumer, not a manufacturer, we're expected to do this kind of thing and at the local level expected to defend our industry. But when you have somebody that gets their mail addressed to the honorable and they're a member of the House and the Senate of a, of a given state and they're going to mat for this industry, that's when you know things are starting to turn for the better. So we cannot thank Senator Sturgeon enough, the members of the Senate Executive Committee, and this week, this week, there's some critical votes on that legislation in the Delaware legislature. So, and before I get to two uh, last states that I want to highlight, um, I, you, our, our folks listening to this that are consumers and retailers in New York and Delaware, uh, PCA at CigarAction.org has has these petitions live and and active for petitions to their members of the legislature in New York and Delaware. So go support these bills if you're a member of, of any of the uh, retail group, the, the state association or PCA in New York or Delaware, go to those, circulate those petitions to your consumer base 
for your respective shops out there to support Senate Bill 131 in Delaware, Senate Bill 641 and 642 in the state of New York. Please go to CigarAction.org and, and do that. And I want to highlight two quick states where there is serious grave concern about tax proposals, and that's tax increase bills in the state of Maine and Massachusetts. Uh, also live on, P- on CigarAction.org, petitions opposing doubling the OTP taxes in Maine and Massachusetts. There are retailers on the ground that have provided testimony, multiple trade associations at at the state and federal level uh, opposing those bills in Maine and Massachusetts. So also those petitions are live to oppose those two bills. So we got three bills to support and two to oppose today. Yeah, absolutely. And Glenn, I I know that you participated in the uh, executive Senate executive committee hearing on uh, SS131. And uh, I, I do want to give kudos to the participants there. Uh, Pat from Cigar Sessions did an incredible job. Amazing. Uh, you know, I've been to that retail establishment there. Uh, great place, but he mobilized his consumers. And there were a ton of public health advocates on that call that could have completely derailed the movement there. Uh, but his efforts and Corey Stansberry, um, mm-hmm. you know, in Delaware, their efforts were critical in getting that bill just out of that out of that committee. Um, you know, they did an amazing job, and and you and I were in the office in Washington, kept tallying this up, and it was like, what was it, Josh? About seven or eight opposed, and we equaled that seven or eight uh, in support of the legislation. And the great part about it was at least half of those were consumers. Consumers that took the time out of their day, I could you could tell that some of them were driving to and from work, and and the like, and they took time out of their day to support their local brick and mortar shops in that hearing, and that's a, for something that's uh, average Joe consumer to do that uh, was also it's an amazing commentary again, and I, I cigar sessions did yeoman's work at mobilizing their consumer base and members to support those bills, as did the other retailers in Delaware. And uh, they, we need to engage that statewide. But it was, a, again, just a marvelous case study. Yeah, and this is fantastic. This is underscoring what we've been building towards, even with some of the stumbling blocks of the pandemic and shutdowns and, and, and everything else that's happened, cancellation of trade shows, all that kind of stuff. We're, uh, <coughs> pardon me, we, we continue to march steadily towards the, the goals that we have of, of greater coordination and greater connection at local levels because we're starting to see the fruits of these labors pay off. We understand that when we are working and collaborating hand in hand on message, engaging consumers, retailers, us, legislators, we can have success. We're seeing it. And again, in places that you would think that would be hostile territory, we have a strong message. We have strong data. We have great case studies. We know we can get this accomplished. And so uh, we are guardedly optimistic that we're going to continue to march in this right direction as we continue to bring more and more stakeholders on board with us. Um, and again, the uh, invitation is open to everybody to, to reach out, connect with us and, and continue this this work forward. Um, I know that we're, we're bumping up against a deadline here because I know, Glenn, you've got to get going. Um, so on that note, again, just want to say uh Thank you, everybody. I look forward to seeing everybody at the trade show. Uh, Make sure you're registered, signed up, and and everything else. We're going to have a great time. It's going to be a phenomenal cigar, premium cigar family reunion, and we're looking forward to it. And uh, any questions, please feel free to reach out and give me a call, text, or email. And likewise, anything related to government affairs, as always, please make sure that you are uh, calling Josh and Glenn and making sure that uh, we keep you nice and protected. So on that note, Glenn, have a great rest of your afternoon. Everybody else, have a great rest of your afternoon. Happy Thursday, everybody. And again, enjoy your Memorial weekends and see everybody in Las Vegas in July. Thanks all. Take care.